Get up! Hey, hey, hey I'm you question! Are you guys last discipline today? Let's go. This job is it's very demanding. We train more than 35,000 recruits a year. You work an 18-hour day, and then you're back in the next day, 0400. You're not looking, man. Look! We put stress on them here, yelling at them here 24-7. They'll understand that when they get to the fleet and something goes bad, they'll be able to handle all that pressure and all that stress. Now! First cup of the day. Yep, it's time. <laughs> I tell my recruits, you don't quit on us, we won't quit on you. You got to come in and give us 100% of your dirt. Get louder! It is 3.40 in the morning. Uh, going to work. Able to wake the recruits up at 5 and get the day started. I'm Chief Davala. I am a Recruit Division Commander here at RTC Great Lakes. I feel that recruits have this idea that just one day we woke up and we became RDCs as if we never had to go through a process, um, as if we never went through any of the hard times to get to where we're at. Word of advice, when you do get orders here, please get a jacket for Illinois. Don't bring one of your jackets from back home. Uh, the weather up here is technically cold all year round, so they can say it's going to be partly clouds today. Out of nowhere, it just starts snowing or something like that. My name is Pedro Sabarti. I'm a recruit division commander here at Recruit Training Command. I went through boot camp February 23rd, 2011. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't march. Um, I, could, I was good at PT, but uh, my RDCs, um, they would always yell at me a lot for not being able to march. Um, we're here now. It is. 325. Um, and I knew when I was a recruited boot camp, I wanted to be a RDC. Good morning, Petty Officer. Senior Recruit White, Division 231, Robin. Security Watch, standing by further instruction, Petty Officer. Who's the Chief of Naval Operations? Petty Officer, Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Richardson, Petty Officer. Who is Waking up early in the morning, it's the first thing that's on my mind. Did my stopwatch make those correct deck law entries before I walked in the compartment? You, get over here. I'm talking to you, Starboard Watch. Yes, sir. Go behind her. Read this. Read it. Excuse me. And try again. Hey, right, Petty Officer. Good afternoon, Petty Officer. Senior Recruit Thomas, Division 231. Security Watch, waiting further instructions. Petty Officer, sir. Look, does anything here say waiting further instructions? No, Petty Officer. You're not looking, man. Look! All right, Petty Officer. Try it. Read it and look. All right, Petty Officer. Good afternoon, Petty Officer. Senior Recruit Thomas, Division 231. Security Watch. Same by further instructions, Petty Officer. Who is the Chief of Naval Operations? That's 4.47. I'm on the way in to rev the division. We wake up at 05.30 today. So I'm a night person, so it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes to wake up and get, out, get yourself out of bed. I'm Chief Justin Kells, a Recruit Division Commander here at Recruit Training Command. Go! Go! Recruit Division 936, reporting. 
Is that what it says, recruit? Put your hand back up. Aye, right, Chief. Read it. Broken, uh, security won't send anybody for an instruction, Chief. Start over from the top, recruit. Aye, right, Chief. It was kind of surreal being in charge of 88 recruits. You don't know the feeling until you're, you're in front of 88 recruits and you're leading them to a goal. Uh, staying energetic throughout the whole day uh, takes mind power. Um, you, have to, you have to keep telling yourself that you're doing it to motivate recruits and you're motivating other people. Um, sometimes you pull that motivation from the recruits. Sometimes you have to uh, find it within the, the partners that you're pushing with and sometimes you just got to find that inner drive. Assigned to each division, there are three RDCs. Typically one is going to be a chief or a lead, which could be also a first class petty officer. And then you will have two partners, which would be a second class or another first class. You have A little bit of coffee, a uh, little bit of motivation from recruits, and uh, motivation from your petty officers that you're pushing with or whoever your partners are you're pushing with to, to help you get through the day. Uh, sometimes the recruits will just do something that uh, you wouldn't expect them to do, especially this early in training, and they give you motivation to help, help train them. We work. On average, probably 14 to 16 hours a day the first couple of weeks, uh, just trying to get the recruits in that mindset that they're, they're at boot camp and uh, training them everything that they need to be trained on to, to make them successful while they're here at boot camp. And then after that, you can relax the hours a little bit, but uh, you still gotta keep that drive on. Come on, you have to march! Recruit, march, pick your feet up. You're not special. So some of the biggest challenges that we face, uh, I would say, would be recruits coming here with the mindset that they, they know everything and they, they don't want to listen to what we're trying to teach them. You have to train them into thinking the same way so they're all on the same page and they're all working as a team. All right, so did you guys look at your racks? Yes, Chief. They're all jacked up, right? Yes, Chief. Why is that? They were set up right, Chief. Not set up right. Nobody wants to own up to anything they do, right? When was the last time you did an ITE session? Come to the ready! Always ready! Some of the problems we have at first when we're training, I would say is just they don't listen. They don't pay attention to the, the amount of detail that you want them to pay attention to. Attention to detail is big here um, because when they get to the fleet, depending on what their job is or what they're going to do for the Navy, if we don't teach that here, they have the potential to, to injure each other or themselves or somebody else or even get somebody else killed. Doing something else, right? Yes, Chief! But you guys don't want to do that. You want to be on your own program. You don't want to listen. What we just did ITE for was because they can't pay attention to detail. Uh, everything has a place and a way of folding it. So now we're gonna go through step by step, fold everything in the lock compartment again and get the lock compartment set up. Here's open mouth shut. Hey, everybody gather around. Come behind the clan barrel with your training guy. Let's go. Hey, turn up the motivation. Eyes on the weapon. Right, up, sir. Yes, this is very important. You have to understand that. When an enemy is on a ship or near four by, you have to know how to use these weapons. Do you understand that? Yes, ready up, sir. Negative. Alright. I think everybody loves Raymond is on this early. I don't know if you like that show. I do. My name is Petty Officer Ogden Douglas, and I'm a live fire weapons instructor here at Recruit Training Command. The 
you know, it was kind of interesting to come back to this command and drive onto this base and not be worried about getting yelled at at everything I'm going to be doing. So that was interesting that I can walk down the sidewalk whichever way I want. And it makes it easier. It's kind of neat to see the recruits that are coming in and just remembering that you were in their spot just a few years ago and that you can kind of help them. If you remember your boot camp experience, you can remember what you didn't like about it and maybe take that and uh, teach them things you wish that you had known. Yeah, never did. Okay. Just paying attention to what line coach is saying, the range safety officer is saying, point down range, come away from those taps, and you'll be fine. Okay, you're not going to hurt anyone. You just got to pay attention. And if you feel like they're yelling at you, they're just doing it because you have double ear bow on, you know? They got to yell so you can hear them, okay? Don't let that get in your head. All right, what line do you need to be in? This one, I think? So I'm not a recruit division commander. I'm not here to yell and scream on any little thing that they do wrong. I don't know a lot of what the RDCs are supposed to do or the little nuances to their jobs. When they come here to live fire though, and we train them, as soon as they step through the doors, we try and vision them as students, not recruits. So we try and teach them. We keep them to a high standard, but we also try and keep it a somewhat relaxed environment so that they can learn better and not hurt themselves or somebody else. Who's a Game of Thrones fan? mess this up I'll give you spoilers well when they go out to the fleet a lot of the recruits are going to be expected to stand a watch and a lot of those watches are going to be armed or they could possibly go to a temporary duty with a security force and they're going to be armed there as well so they're joining the armed forces they need to learn the basics of at least a nine millimeter and how to use it how to employ it but yeah I would say the majority of them fail the first time and then they come back through We'll shoot them a second time, and a lot of them do pretty well. Sometimes we'll have a recruit go from failing to almost getting expert. So it just really depends. Hey, Douglas, sit in the back. You failed. All right, tell me in your words what happened. Apparently, made a. Apparently, I don't have uh, apparently. What are my last videos? I. Uh, I. You loaded during dry fire. That's what you did, correct? Because that's what's written on here. And then they did let you shoot, so my line coach was being extra nice to you, trying to give you a second chance, and you messed it up because you didn't reload. You just weren't understanding the commands. You, you just weren't grasping them. Is that correct? Yes, but yeah, I couldn't. Why? I couldn't really hear for one, to be honest. Okay, so what do you do if you can't hear and you're confused? TTO, right? Did you do that? Or did you just kind of go with it? I wanted to be confident. Yeah. You want to be confident. So you want to be confident but mess something up and potentially hurt somebody. Or just completely mess it all up. Can I be honest, Petty Officer? Yes. I was a little nervous. You're going to get nervous out in the fleet sometimes too, but if you don't know something, say something. Because then you do it wrong and you end up in situations like this where you're in trouble and you're going to get set back. Or you go out to the fleet and you're working on some evolution and you get somebody hurt. Do you understand that? Like, I don't care about you trying to be confident. Confidence is good, but not when you don't know what the hell you're doing. And nerves? Nerves are fine. Everybody gets nervous, but that's no excuse to mess something up. Yes, sir. Anything else you want to be honest about? Uh, I never really shot a gun, so... Don't care. We get plenty of recruits come here who didn't shoot a gun, who can follow instructions. That's your biggest problem. You can't follow instructions. And you need to figure that out before you come back onto this range. You understand that? Yes, yes. All right. Take that holster and belt off, redo all buckles, get back in the classroom, get out. The way I deal with it and I think that works is you just got to remind them that this is boot camp, they're nervous here, and that's all well and good, but they're going to be nervous at other times in the Navy and they can't just back out of things when they do get nervous. It's not an option, it's not a choice. They're going to be doing things that sometimes, yeah, they are nervous. And a lot of the times, as soon as they get out here on the range, they get a couple rounds shot down range, those nerves usually tend to go away, and they're all right. A lot of these recruits have never touched a weapon before, so they come here, and in about two days, we get them to be able to draw from the holster and put two rounds on target. So sometimes that's pretty gratifying, and if they can carry that and remember it and take it to the fleet, I think they'll be okay as a baseline and then to uh, get started to receive more weapons training and qualifications. Right, now you're going to stand attention. Face this way. Okay. What's going on, Woo? 
Um, I failed the swim test today. Okay. And I don't know what, what they what, what they were saying. saying. Okay, so okay. you were swimming on your face instead of trying to float on your back. Yeah, right? I was trying to swim because I know I can swim. Okay. Okay. So you got off the off the bridge. That's the hardest part. Getting yeah. that jump. Most people like, don't even Most jump. people don't want to do that. So if you can get into oh, that happens every that day. A lot. Um, we'll have. <clears throat> Especially now that we've turned up the heat, we started being a little bit more intense out there on the on the deck, and uh, so we're probably going to see that at least once a day for the next couple of days or a couple of weeks. Do you know where I work at? Where? No. You don't know what I do? Remember the swimming pool? The big old swimming pool that you were scared of? Where daddy work? Good morning, I'm Instructor Isaacson. The first thing that we're going to go My name is uh, Petty Officer Isaacson, and I work over at Recruit Training Command as a water survival instructor. Uh, a typical day is uh, I'll, I'll come in, and then 0800 is the first uh, evolution, which is uh, AMRSI, remediation uh, swimming. Right here, right now, we're trying to screen these guys one more time because they're all stepping today. Lay back. Go. So these, all these swimmers right here are coming from 1-1 one, one day, their first day uh, of the initial training. They came here, they failed to swim, they got some remediation, they couldn't pass it. Pass or fail, you guys can't dig down yourselves, all right? Remember, the goal that I, that I wanted today was to make sure that you come out of here just a little bit better. Cross your arms. Listen to the uh, chief on deck that's up there, all right? Everyone face For example, like 80 people in a division that will, uh, will come in for uh, one one day. And usually we'll get about probably like 15 of those that will say like they can't swim. So then they'll get like kind of swim lessons there. So roughly about each division, we, we can you'll have from like five to 10 that won't be able to do the swim. One of the big factors is like where you grew up. So a lot of like the inner cities don't have swimming pools. So kids that are coming from like the inner cities never really get that experience on um, swimming. So we got first recruit right here coming up. Um, you'll every now and then you'll get like like. like reactions from these recruits because they've been here a while. How long have you been here? Um, this is my second or third week or one so, week of training. Okay, so yeah, so you got third week of training right now. I think the biggest ones that really get me that pass the swim test are the ones that are on their week five, week six, like graduation is like right around the corner and you'll get them and they'll just say, they'll, they'll say thank you. They'll be like, you saved me from um, getting removed from my division or calling home and letting my parents know that I'm not gonna graduate on time. And that's like one of the best feelings in the world. So what's your name? Sims, Seaman Recruit Sims. So you got Seaman Recruit Sims right here. Um, she just passed her swim today and she just passed it just in time. Next week, next Friday, is when her division would have left her and she would have got left behind. Um, how do you feel right now? I told you it was easy. Yeah, I'm so happy. Um, I hit my head on that wall. Ooh, best feeling. Yeah. Right. Thank so you, sir. You're welcome. I know that they're not just passing the test. I know that I'm sending them out to the fleet where if they needed to, I'm giving them the proper skills on how to abandon ship, how to recover from that, and then swim to the rescue boat, or just stay there and survive until someone comes get you. So just knowing that them taking the skills that I taught them, like I feel confident and I feel confident in, in my teaching that that I'm helping the, in case something ever did happen, if they did have to abandon ship. I gave you everything that I could teach you guys on how to swim. It's up to you guys if you guys are gonna pass this. Why quit? Why quit on your one one day of training? So what I need you guys to do, you step from that tower, use what I taught you. 
get the composure, relax. But at the same time, you guys need to get pumped up about this. One, you're a one-one day in boot camp. You guys haven't got kicked out of your division yet. You guys haven't got set back. You're not going to. Because you guys are gonna pass today, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So far we're, right now we have everybody that went to level two is gonna pass. So that, that that's the reasons why like I like it, just like being an instructor or being like a coach, whatever you wanna like call me here. Um I know that I help somebody through boot camp. It's, it's one of the best feelings in life, and that's why I like coming to work every single day. Let's go, hurry up. We're at the pool picking up uh, my recruits. Um, they just finished their initial swim qualification. So um, we're gonna get them ready, uh, get them out on the grinder and march them back to the ship. Stand at attention, hands closed. I think some of the misconceptions that recruits have about RDCs is that that they're here just to be, be mean to them. Uh, and that's not really the case at all. They're, we're here to, to mold them into, into sailors. Who thinks they did good? Talk, speak, speak. Who thinks they did bad? Yeah. Why do you think you did bad? <coughs> what? You didn't, you didn't push hard enough? What's that? You kept telling yourself to give up. What did I tell you in the beginning? Don't give up, right? Tell yourself you could do it, right? What happens when you're on that ship? You've been awake for 24 hours and you want to quit, right? But somebody comes and attacks the ship. What are you going to do? Are you going to quit? No, Chief! Are you going to quit? No, Chief! Are you going to quit? No, Chief! Better not. When the time comes, you need to put out. You need to fight. You need to fight through that pain. We don't quit, ever. One team. One fight! Sweet! One team! One fight! One team! One fight! When they were out there PTing especially, they, these recruits get in their own heads and they say, oh, I, I just want to quit. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, want to, I don't want to run. It hurts. And sometimes you just gotta, you gotta yell, yell, yell to get them motivated. And then at the end, sit them down and, and explain why, why you're yelling. Why you're out there motivating them to be, to be better because you want them, you want to see them succeed. We're not here to see people fail. We're here to see people succeed. So a lot of them, it takes a minute for them to understand that it's not about me. It's about the 88 other recruits that are next to me. And it's about everybody else besides me. But I tell my recruits, if you don't quit on us, we won't quit on you. But you got to come in and give us 100% every day. Whatever it is we're training, whatever it is we're doing, just know we're doing it for a reason, not just to tell you to do it. So I found a recruit here. She has a headband around her arm. This is in accordance with regulations, especially after this recruit just took test one. So I'm about to give her some uh, MIT motivational tool so she knows not to do this okay. again. You know what? You know why? I'm about to give you some motivational? Why? After you just took test one twice, you were a failure. We went over this. You do not wear it unless it is a wet. Religious wet. So you knew this was wrong. So I'm strict on my recruits because um, I don't want them to lose military brand. One, two, three. One. Move fast. One, two, three. Two. One, yeah, two, three. Let's go. Down. Up. Down. Up. Get your body alignment straight. That's your last one. You touch the deck again, you will feel IT. I will document your heart cry. You understand that? Go down! Up. Get your hips straight. Last one in about body alignment. You will feel alone due to body alignment. Down. Be sure with the part. Don't stop! You know, if I would have not have caught in this, and if you'd have got caught walking out on the streets, of FQA would have came in here. The division would have got a demerit chip because of you. So you're not a team player. I apologize for you. The team needs each other to graduate. 
People make mistakes. I have to Today you made one of those mistakes. Yes, pay officer. From here on out, this should be a training, a training opportunity for you. Yes, pay officer. To explain to anybody, regardless of gender, this is not authorized. I pay officer. We're human. We make mistakes. Yes, pay officer. This is a stupid mistake. Yes, pay officer. I agree, pay officer. And it should never happen again. I pay officer. I don't want it to happen again. I don't either, pay officer. And then they're like family towards the end because uh, you build a bond. You got them for eight weeks, eight to nine weeks. So you can't t possibly any RDC on this base can't tell me over this amount of time that these recruits become family to you because they got your bad just like you got theirs. Let's go. So coming here to RTC, you, you think that you're, you're just going to push nonstop. So you're going to be here uh, 16, 18 hours a day for three years. And that, that's really not the case. You're here, uh, you do a push get a, at least a week off and then um, before you go back on to another push and then uh, after you've done a year of pushing you'll get a year of uh, recruit training period so that's where you're gonna do just random jobs throughout the base to help train the recruits but you're not actively on push so you're getting that family time and then the last year that you're here you're, you're going back on push and training your last couple few divisions. I'm Petty Officer Keegan Dyer I'm a recruit division commander at Recruit Training Command. So right now I am on what we call RTP, which is recruit training period. It's the year in between your two uh, push periods. I currently work at Fleet Quality Assurance or FQA. We go out and we assess the recruits. We do personnel inspections, we do drill inspections, we go into compartments for compartment readiness. Quality assurance, basically everybody calls us the police. They try to avoid us the best they can. They don't normally like to see us walk in when we have the briefcase. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you running in a road? Why are you not on a sidewalk? Yeah, you who's staring at me in the middle of the parking lot. What are you doing? Getting back to ship three. Why are you in the middle of the street? Get over here, now. Why would you walk into a parking lot? When do you ever walk in a parking lot as a recruit? When there's a part, there's a sidewalk right in front of you. Does that make any sense? No, Petty Officer. We what assess the recruit's ability to do something, but we're also keeping an eye on the RDCs that they're training, how they're supposed to. Drill hall, we are about to do a phase three drill inspections for two divisions. Chief, you ready? Every score, every hit or unsat is a point one off their score. So they took five unsat, so they got a four point five. So it's not a training deficiency. It's just recruits doing mis making mistakes, which everybody makes mistakes. So instead of getting a training deficiencies for the RDCs, it's just an unsat for their inspection. So with that being said, you took five unsats with a score of four point five. Chief, any questions? Nope. Thank you, Browns. Yeah, two minutes to hydrate. Go, go! I don't ever see nobody walking. You will hydrate. You will hydrate. You will hydrate. Four, two, one, two, three, four, six, two, one, two, three. Why are you here? To go to war, Chief. Why are you here? To go to war, Chief. How are you supposed to win the war? This is for the Chief. Well, you guys lack discipline today. You absolutely lack discipline. And this is why you failed. Down. Up. Four, Down. Up. Two, Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. On your feet. Making mistakes when well, you're not supposed to make mistakes is how people get killed. Six weeks of boot camp, you're getting complacent. You still got two more weeks until battle stations. How are you going to make it if you're complacent already? If you want to graduate, you have to do it as a team. All these assessments 
require teamwork. When I came to boot camp, it was, I'm going to do four years, I'm going to get my GI Bill, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to get out. Then I came to boot camp. My third RDC at the time was CTR1 Bullock. She is now senior chief. So she set like a really good, solid foundation of my naval career. And I wanted to give that back. Three, four, here we go, we're gonna try something new. C-130 rolling down the strip. C-130 rolling down the strip. Division 232 is going to take a little trip. Division 232 is going to take a little trip. You don't be like, oh, okay, hey, here's your rope. Go out there and train these recruits. It doesn't work that way. Out in the fleet, you'll often hear people talk about recruit training command or RDC duty being arduous, which it is arduous. It's hard. Uh, however, you also hear that you know you don't get time off. You're eight weeks straight, seven days a week, no time off whatsoever, where you're pretty much just sleeping here at the barracks, which none of that is true. And you have three partners that nobody ever wants to talk about. They think that you're pushing one division by yourself without any help. So the biggest myth was absolutely the stress cards. We always used to hear about stress cards, that recruits got stress cards and they could just pull them out of their pockets and they got to be excused from any evolution that they were doing. I've heard some misconceptions about boot camp. They say that um, it's not rewarding or the atmosphere just isn't good here at Recruit Training Command, but that wasn't the case at all. Uh, one of the rumors that I actually heard when I got up here was right before I started C School. That C School was a mini boot camp, well not a mini boot camp, actually a longer boot camp because it's 13 weeks. I was terrified that, does that mean I had to sleep in a compartment? Like do I not get to go home at night? Um, and then they said the same thing about when you're on push, like that you would sleep in the ships. So that was obviously untrue. We got to go home every night and sleep unless you have your mid-watch. Of course you have to stay in your mid-watches. These hours are long, but I think that a lot of the times they go by faster than you would imagine because of how busy you are with the recruits. I think coming here, the hours are worth it because there's always that one recruit that you find in P-Days that you never think they're going to make it through. And then one day it clicks for them. And that's that to me is when all the hard work is worth it. Uh, you don't get to do all the fun things that you would typically do on a normal shore duty, um, but the reward in the end and the leadership experience and the, the people experience that you get, you'll never get at any other command here. And it makes you far off better. Victory, victory, that's our battle cry. You're going to have the best time at this command, or you're going to have the worst time at this command. It is what you make it to be in the end. The hard days, the hard days are really hard. Uh, you're, the days where you're, you work an 18 hour day, you come in at 04 and you leave at 2200 and then you're back in the next day, 0400. Uh, you, and you do that for a week, a week at a time and it, it starts to suck because this job is, is very demanding. There are most definitely days where you'll wake up and you do not want to come into work. You don't want to do it. But knowing that you, you are here for three years and doing what you're doing, you come here, you open up that door, and your, your watch dinner sounds off so loud and so proud and they're calling you petty officer, they're calling you chief. And then you realize that you have a red rope on your shoulder and you are doing something that a lot of people will never want to do or even think about doing. And I was one of them where I was like, absolutely not. I graduated boot camp and that was it, I'm not coming back. And to think about it now, it's, it's mind blowing to think of all the, the good things that I'm putting into these, these recruits that are gonna be sailors and they're gonna go out and do great things. When they get to graduation, they walk across, they're about to become Navy sailors. It's, uh, it makes you wanna strike a tear. because you get really emotional. It's like, dang, I did that like for eight to nine weeks. Me and the other two RDCs on this push, we did that. And then they introduce you to their families, whoever comes to graduation, and then they thank you as well too. Um, so it definitely it makes you more emotional because you don't know how much it means to the other families that come out that you took care of their, their kids. I like being an RDC. 
Like I said, I refer to my recruits as my kids. I'm like, I'm, I'm very proud to be an RDC. So if you think you don't have what it takes, you, you probably do. Come here and, and let the people that are here mold you into, into a better leader. There, there's some fantastic leaders here that just help to, to make you better. Uh, and when you're surrounded by that excellence, you become part of that excellence as well. Come here, come here and be an RDC. Come see what it's like. I've been at work for 16 hours. That's an easy day. 16 hours. Go home, probably get a bite to eat, and um, get a couple hours of sleep. Be back here at uh, 05.